Welcome, everyone, to another edition of The Dark Match. This is the, the WWE edition of the week post-Night of Champions, a pay-per-view that, as we reviewed it, received uh, mixed reactions, some of them negative, some of them confused, uh, some of them fairly positive and open. But nonetheless, how, I there was so, sort of a pall of disappointment over it. In my opinion, Raw kind of kind of improved that. I'm, I'm Christopher Says, as usual, Dark Match is Mastodon on the monotone. I'm the Aaron. Would you say that Night of Champions was like John Cena, the most controversial superstar in WWE history? Some people love him, some people hate him. But the great thing about WWE is you can cheer whoever you want. No, because Night of Champions had a much greater move set than Cena did. <laughs> uh, so true. And me, I am the fat man, Subric, here with a very poorly impressioned version of what is the Iron Sheik tweeting this time. Please excuse me because my chic impression kind of sucks. Tiger Woods would have sex with the Miss Piggy. That was that, it. That's all. That's it. That's it and that's all. Wow. Fighting. Well, maybe we'll talk about that when they're on Raw. Um, which actually reminds me, before we get into our brief diversionary thing about TNA, because we weren't able to record last night's episode, um, do you think that when are they going to do the next old school Raw? Um, geez, they usually do it in the summer, don't they? Or no, they do it in no, October. No, that was in November. Yeah, I was going to say, they, yeah, probably October, November area. But it's like they're they're touring Europe around then. I mean, it might happen. <clears throat> Actually, it might be past uh, Survivor. It'll probably be, uh, yeah, I was going to say, it'll probably be um, before TLC. But um, either way, uh, I know the Arrow caught TNA more so than any of the rest of us. I mean... It's got what, do you, point, what do you want to know? <laughs> it's got to be a point where, like, if I'm not scheduled for the show and this generally applies to everyone else, like, we've reached the, the point with TNA where if, if if we don't have to watch it for a show, we're not going to watch it. We might have it on, like, do a call, but it's... <sighs> it's I'll, I'll say it's, this. We're given no incentive. Barely. I'll yet. say this about the show. The impact wasn't terrible, but the fact is the first 20 minutes of it were, and that's the part that makes you pay attention most. So if the first 20 minutes are bad, you're going to be down about the whole show. Hmm. It's like I'm looking at some results, and like the, you say the first 20 minutes were horrible. Was it all just a... It was... The, what I remember off the top of my head, if I don't look back on anything, I just remember Karen, Karen Jarrett ta talking to um, I actually remember Tracy that. Brooks... And and thinking how large Tracy Brooks's boobs were, and thinking that that tends to be what everyone see, thinks of when they like that. Just that's got to be bad on your neck. And then they basically did a whole kind of Karen's trying to do a whole right to censor thing, or, or and uh, and she's basically just telling Tracy to cover up her boobs because um she's trying to make it not look like a whorehouse. Then Kazarian comes in and he's yeah. just like, well. Of course it's going to look like a whorehouse when you're dressed like a madam. Uh, and then, like, what's-her-face? Um, she tells uh, Tess Mocker, and, uh, who looks fantastic, um, and Mickey James do have a uh, match together. Yeah, uh, because oh, that's yeah. One oh, thing. I remembered something. Oh, oh, also, another thing, sorry, I guess another thing was um, Tracy is still upset about having to sleep with Eric Bischoff three times. Um, to try and get the job of knockout law back well, again, still, uh, to only have married. it, yeah, still married to Kazarian, who, uh, Kazarian, uh, perfectly uh, fine with this, obviously. Yeah, um, let's, 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 he comes let's skim into over, Defender. let's please uh, skim over the rest of him, because, like, it, yeah. the more I hear about this. I, I just, I guess I'm just kind of stuck on the, stuck on this segment, because it, it was terrible. And in case you guys haven't noticed, uh, Subrick didn't watch it at all, so, but, but <laughs> that, we don't, we don't, uh, hate on him for that, um, Mickey you James actually, did, a, did an awful flapjack. Yeah, that was about the only thing. And the thing is, you know, I don't even know whose fault it was. That was the only par bad part of the match. It was, I'm guessing, I'm guessing their jumping was out of sync to lift, for the lift. Um, and so Mickey had to do it the hard way. And she struggled to do it. But um, other than that, that was about the only bad thing. Yeah, um, X Division title. Oh yeah, more more Jeff Hardy guilting this time involving uh, yeah, mas Mr. Masturbation jokes himself, Al Snow. Um, 
It's true. Like that's that's the only thing he ever does on his Twitter. But um, Austin Aries versus Jesse Sorensen, where um, yeah, this match was a joke. Well, yeah, Jesse Sor- yeah, does, Jesse Sorensen really, sucks. Doesn't really do well for him. His gimmick is, is that, that he's a quarterback. His gimmick is that he's uh Alex Riley. Yeah. Poor man's. Well, the thing is, Alex Riley was just. He was just an athlete. I mean, granted, yes, he played, like, linebacker at Boston College or whatever, and, and we learned on SmackDown that he came in as a quarterback but then switched over. Oh, wait, no, that was actually Superstars, which none of you get to watch because I have a download for it. Um, but, um, <laughs> but wow. yeah, Josh Matthews brought that to my attention. I Ooh, watched that, like, um, five hours ago. Yeah, there are a lot of backstage segments and – with mm-hmm. that, involving Anarchy and Matt Morgan guilting Jeff and oh yeah Matt Rob Morgan Van Dam, God, this Rob Van Dam gets laid out Jeff yeah. argue with Kurt Angle and now Kurt Angle's chewing him out as if he's the as he's if the he's poster like, boy for like yeah. he's the poster boy for like not getting in trouble but yeah like Daniels talks about his uh, win over AJ Styles which I I I like that aspect of him I I think it's 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 very cheap yeah it's very it's very funny right. But, it's it's very petty. He's kind of he almost seems like he's doing a Christian a Christian kind of uh, heel turn thing. I, I know. Um. Um. I, I definitely. What I thought was funny about this segment was that um he 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 goes up there. He's like, I'm not going to be facing Bobby Roode because I already beat AJ Styles. Ha ha ha. And then um then AJ's music hits. He comes out and he's just like, You keep going on. You're like, You need to get over. Just okay. I lost. I lose all the time. Sad, sad but true. Oh. And then um. Bully and then, then they like they they, right. they cross the line. They like one of them crosses the line, and then the other one hits. They start brawling all over the place. My favorite part of this brawl was they start brawling into a place with a bunch of desks, and just it says direct auto insurance in the place, like like as if direct auto insurance actually set up like an office for the impact zone crowd, so that you know just in case you need to buy car insurance on their way out because you know Universal Studios is just such an unsafe area for them. I guess so. Um, I'm I'm not even gonna dignify it anymore. But Bully Ray and Jerry Lynn versus Mr. Anderson and not RVD because Jerry Lynn's still wrestling. It was, yeah, it was a handicap match. Yes, he is. He's a heel now because yeah. because it's always about over. it's always about RVD. Um, mm-hmm. um, and he has the worst bleached hair. He looks he looks like he has a doll's authentic uh, blonde hair. I don't know. He looks like when they did that EV two and they brought back um, Raven. Raven looked terrible. And he had bleached hair for some reason. Well, he, had he, that, it. he had that shitty bleached hair since, like, 06. I haven't watched anything from Raven in, like, I think I maybe watched some of his, some of his matches with Punk and ROH. And that's about it. So I wouldn't know. Yeah. Now, the worst thing about that look, though, other than the bleached hair, was that he had these really crappy-looking yellow contacts. Oh, I didn't see that. I was just was like, that, who is that? And then somebody told me it was Raven. I was just like, God, what happened? Did did Raven put his face into the Fatifier app on the iPhone? Doubtful. <laughs> but yeah, um, the next segment is between AJ and Daniels. They're they're kind of having their their ho uh, lover squabble. We already did this segment about the legitimacy. Well, I I did it too late, so there's I mean I did it too soon, so there's the the proper time, but. It doesn't matter. This show's, all, this show's um, edited together. It's not like it's in the proper order anyway. This could be from personal. three different nights for all we know. Yeah, and it could have been shot about like 15 times. Um, right. Daniels. Oh, yeah, they're fighting at ringside after the break. Uh, Frank Kazarian. Oh, yeah, he's could. Da- oh, yeah, I guess Daniels turned full heel. I wish I didn't uh, mm. miss that, but. Yeah. Like I said, nothing special they brought around the impact um, zone, and then they. Went into the direct auto insurance and booth. Talk, talk about Kurt Angle versus James Storm as the main event because, like that, I'm sure it would have been all right. It shouldn't have been a main event because James Storm's working injured, and he really needs to get surgery. What's injured on him? Uh, I believe it's his. It's one of his arms. I want to say it's his collarbone, maybe his rotator cuff area, possibly elbow, something in that. Well, then again, yeah. this is the company that is making that Sarita is wrestling for, despite having a face in eight pieces. Well, it's a f- apparently facial paralysis. It's not like facial paralysis can like it prevents you from wrestling. I mean, it's still, just, it's not it's exactly just she can't, the smartest she thing. She doesn't have the same amount of charisma. Still, it's it's not exactly the smartest thing when you have a facial paralysis. When you have facial paralysis, 
to, you know, be getting hit in the head. All I'm saying is nobody is forcing her to go out there. All right, guys, we 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 should probably move move back onto the WWE. The more we uh, get right. stuck in this, uh, needless to say, Sarita's mask is shit. But there's really nothing else they could do if they want to keep giving her money. Um, right. Well, and she wants to keep going, but yeah, what? But um, so raw. It's held tonight in uh, in Ohio, I believe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, honestly, it was Cleveland. I know. I th- yeah, this was Mrs. Hometown. Well, not necessarily his hometown because he's from like some suburb of Cleveland, but you know they bill him from Cleveland. Yes, and if the the whole if the whole uh, tradition of like screwing someone in, at at their hometown was never ever yeah. uh, here it is the hometown jobber rule. Yeah, never more evident tonight. Uh. But we open the show with everyone's favorite. Um, Everyone's favorite guy all of a sudden, you know, because he wasn't cool years ago. Uh, CM Punk comes out, and, you know, he starts talking about how he agrees with Miz and Truth, that there is a conspiracy because of what happened uh, all last night at uh, Night of Champions. And then, of course, before he's done, Triple H's music interrupts him, and, he, and of course, Punk likes to get in the line once the um, Triple H gets in the ring. I wasn't finished. Uh... And then so Triple H puts the, their match over, saying they both got, uh, they both beat each other's asses half-handedly. But of course, you know he came out on top. Um, and then they finally get back to the thing that um, that started this whole thing, the two champions stuff. And yeah. then he's he's just like, oh, you're gonna get your rematch. Congratulations, both time. And it's gonna be a triple threat match at Hell in a Cell, which I guess not. Which with with two weeks, with two weeks left, I mean, with two weeks in between pay-per-views, didn't they only set up world title matches on both shows? Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, they didn't even set up the Divas match, which I don't even know what they're going to do. Why there don't you just leave Natalia? Hell in a Cell match. Hopefully not. Well, no, there won't be a Hell in a Cell match for the Divas, but I mean, there will be an, another car, like an entire yeah, car that's going to be Hell in a Cell match. I mean, the thing with that, though, is no one's going to, no one is going to take the Divas of Doom thing seriously anymore after getting after you Beth squashed them twice. And then nope. Beth got squashed to Eve on Raw. No, it wasn't squash. But um, they, yeah, they they lost twice due to roll ups. Even though after the matches, uh, Kelly Kelly and, and Eve were running away. So like, how much? So much so can you get think screaming? I know, I know. How much can you drive the point home that the that they think that they're being uh sold short and like blah blah blah. Um, right. I mean, there, also, I think that, I think there's the faces have have the heat, which is not the way it's supposed to be. Well, they did in Buffalo, but that, that's because no, no. The United Champions. Uh, wait, United Champions was in Buffalo, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, also on on Monday, Monday they were hated. Friday, Kelly Kelly and Eve were hated. Like people want to see Beth and Beth and Natalia. But okay, we'll we'll get back to that when we. Uh when we touch upon it, but nonetheless, like I, I have no problem with the, the match being set up. I, I like the idea of a triple threat between Del Rio, Punk and Cena. I just, I just hate that they're trying to like, they, they're trying to push this never been done before aspect of it where it's just like, yeah. I get it. It's a, it's a triple threat match, but the fear but, I have there is they're not going to have a lot of three man spots. It's going to be one guy resting out on the floor, two guys going at it. And then maybe occasionally yeah, the same guys thing. in the ring. But, the chair like, yeah, if, it, if it was eight years ago, we could probably expect something more spectacular. We'd get the Armageddon. The, but, we'd get the Armageddon again. Six man Hell in a Cell. That's like, I, I don't, um, I don't have like the Hell in a, the Hell in a Cell step is very arbitrary these days. It certainly right. is like during Orton and Sheamus and it, as it was during Undertaker and Kane. Not not yeah, a lot of utilization, but those were some of the worst Hell in a Cell matches. Um, didn't Sheamus and Orton have one? Yeah, that's what. Uh, as I just. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I, I thought I, I, for some reason I was thinking last year it wasn't between Orton and Sheamus. Um, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, there's not even really much you should be able to do if you do play by the actual cage rules. But all the ones we always remember are when they go outside the cage, they get on top of the cage, things like that. And it's just like, it's it's all the crazy stuff that happens. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, that, 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 like, that sticks out in our minds because it was so amazing. The first but then couple, now, plus the first couple really had some unprecedented. Uh, right, they set the standard way too like, high. Like uh, Kane, Kane coming around. I mean, not not getting to the actual match, and of course Mick Foley's whole thing, which really wasn't a good match in the first place. It was just like two spots that that fucking hurt around the world. But nonetheless, but, um, but he cho- but Undertaker choke slammed Terry Funk out of his Reebok. Yes. But no one knew about Terry Funk, there, thus they didn't really care. I mean, there, there were some ECW fans in the crowd, I'm sure. But Even though Funk had been on TV only a few months prior and won the tag belts at WrestleMania. And I think, I think um, what's his face? Um, I think JR said that Terry Funk was out there and he was his best friend. Yeah, he said, here's Terry Funk. The rivalry between Mick Foley and Terry Funk is legendary. But right now, Funk is concerned for Foley's well-being or something like that. Yeah. Even fucking Vince McMahon broke still... character and went out there. Yeah. Um, but, um... I think the standards set too high, and they've made the cage... I mean, it's it's weird to say this, but they've made it too safe. Mm. Like, you don't want to see anyone get hurt. That's kind of arguable. That's not thought... arguable. It's, it's... Yeah, they, they, they have made it too safe, and the reason the cage is there is just to be there. Yeah, I thought that it's, you were going to say that they. I thought for a moment you were said you were going to say that they had made it too big. No, no, it's it probably still has the same same. Yeah, I think it's it's taller. I believe it's much um, taller. Than the last one. Right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's You'll taller. Think twice if you want to try something stupid. Right. Um. It's it's. But the thing is, after last year, they said they even they redesigned it again and they reinforced it even more. Yeah. It, the, we're getting into trivialities. Um, so I mean, it, it, like, I, but like I was saying, like, what Orton went on the cage last year to hold the t- hold the title. Stupid, pointless, whatever. I'm sure it was a cool view for him up there, but you know, no big deal. Yeah. Um, either and way, and I don't uh, expect they, I don't expect much out of this year either. CM Punk. I mean, I, I I'd be a fan of the match, but like again, the Hell in a Cell idea of it. Nah. Okay. Um, also, I hate that they called Satan's structure when, or, or um, because they called us that, um, they called it Elimination Chamber that too. So make up your damn well, minds. That's it's like the Devil's Playground is what it's called. So they're 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 oversights. Yeah, they they call they interchange it. I'm guessing because they couldn't they could only come up with so many cliches. Um. But nonetheless, like, the opening promo still goes on with the talk of the conspiracy. CM Punk and Triple H are on the same page now. Then, then, my favorite guy, um, the executive vice president of talent relations, John Laronitis, comes out. Yes, Johnny Ace and his cancer throat. I think uh, Michael Cole called, referred to him as Johnny Johnny Laronitis on, uh, he, he, he yeah, he on did. SmackDown. He did. Um, and, uh, yeah. I, I, will, I will laugh if, at the culmination of all of this, CM Punk's big knock, like, big attack on Johnny Ace is bringing out a skateboard and hitting him with it. Oh, there there have been enough jokes. Uh, I thought he was going to bring up Baba's wife. Oh, um, yeah. Or Shane yeah. Douglas. <laughs> well, she is probably as small as a skateboard. Uh, but, um, nonetheless, uh, John Laurinaitis pretty much says... Fuck, uh, fuck Kevin Nash. Fuck the the contrivances. I'm just gonna fire fire CM Punk right on the spot. Triple H's o- overruled. Right, right. Um, the thing that I thought was just so blatantly obvious, like the thing is, they're making it too obvious that John Laurinaitis is the guy doing all this stuff. Like you see him doing all the shady stuff, and then you, and then then every time Punk is trying to like, he's getting too close. It's just like John Laurinaitis is there to say. It's just like, no, 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 you shut up. No, no, hold your mouth. No, no, okay, you're fired. <laughs> That's, he just, he just like, it's just like, it's spelling it out and it's making it way too obvious. There's no speculation, like, they had that great opportunity with, with the mysterious text message, and then we find out in the lamest way that he's, then Kevin Nash sent a text message to himself? Yeah, that, that, that was a very bad, uh, resol- like, resolution to that, which... Really, they shouldn't have wrapped that up anyway. It's just like... Solid. I mean, we could have had... We could have had... I guess we could have had Kevin Nash as an option. We could have had John Laurinaitis. We could have had Stephanie, because she was there for some reason. I mean, it was cool that way they brought her back, for, but it was only like for three weeks. Or not even now, three on weeks, a, on, shows. On a couple of other forums, 
that I that I lurk on. I've seen people speculate that Vince was the one who sent the text. Yeah. Could have been Vince, and hell, it could have even been Triple H, just being a liar pants. Yeah, and actually, in terms of uh, this segment, my personal favorite little moment of it was right after Johnny Ace fires Punk. Punk has his you know shit eating smirk on his face, and Triple H is like, "No, you're not fired." Crowd cheers. Punk waves his arms in joking victory. Yeah. He, he, uh, he, cue Final Fantasy fanfare, but um, <laughs> but uh, shit. Oh yeah, Triple H says he's like I I'm I'm the only one who does the firing around here, and but by the end of tonight, someone someone's gonna get fired. Chekhov's gun right there. Uh, he he walks away, and the segment ends. So I so I guess it kind of ends on his word. Did, did you guys notice if uh, CM Punk did anything to sort of make fun of John Laurinaitis uh, back in the ring? Or um, because hmm. like I, I'd figure that would be the, the operative time for him to slip in something. Did he um? Did he make fun of his voice? Or was that Cena? Yeah, he said, "You're the executive vice president of Tab Relations." Yeah, I think that's about all he did. Unless, of yeah. course, there was something even I didn't catch. But yeah, Jim Ross uh, talks about how he's going to interview the new. World Heavyweight Champion Mark Henry. Yeah, that should go over that's, well. Yeah, the, the, yeah. I'll, I'll just, I'll just suffice it to say that promo's hurting me. Uh, but, <laughs> nah, the next match is an eight-man tag: Otunga Cuddy, Barrett, and Christian versus Air Boom, Boom. And, and Justin Gabriel. Oh. I'm guessing they're starting a feud with Gabriel and Wade because they got nothing better to do, and they had an unannounced face turn for Gabriel. <laughs> Yeah. Unannounced. I don't, he I don't he's, it, you, well, he's been a face. He's been a face for a month, but he there was like nothing built up to it. It was just him and Slater split before Money in the Bank, and then well, yeah, like, but, like, they were both they heelish to be the face from the start after that group split. You really, his name, his last like, name is Gabriel. He better be. You, the you face. thought that there was a. You thought that there was a possibility that Heath Slater could have come out of that the baby face. No, but I expected them both to be heels. Like let's see, Otunga Cuddy split. Neither of them are worthy of being a face. Well, it's certainly better than Heath Slater's current reactions from the crowd, namely none. Actually, it's go away Heath, but whatever. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah, this the the match really wasn't much to speak of. It was very short, which is yeah, kind of a trend on. Yeah, um, I don't did right. did Gabriel even get in get a tag or get any offense in on anyone? Uh I mean, you'd think he'd be there I just for the did. finish, but. It, it was well, a they also player. have they also have air um they also have Evans so they can just do a shooting star instead of four fifty and, and I mean, or they could have done a double spot like yeah the, the, like a stereo would, like the, spot it right. was a male version I'll sum it up like this it was a male version of an eight diva tag match it was it was they were pretty much only there just to, so they get a paycheck and not be complaining that they weren't on Raw. Yeah. Plus, plus it was Sheamus. Sheamus was like the the basically the standout here it's at the finish, at least. Well, she, well, Sheamus is really other than Christian the only singles guy in this match with any heat on him whatsoever. Any right, heat he's the, heat. right. He's he's like the only guy who's really over. I mean, Christian is very selective about what city he's in, but Sheamus yeah. has always gotten a reaction. Yeah. And Air Boom, they're or just Air Boom. They're they're yeah, they're kind of they're, they're starting on. I think there's going to be a little progress with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I, just going to be it's going to take a while. Yeah, I mean, they, I, did I the, they, they made the right call in United Champions by having them win. I hope I really hope they they stick with them. Um, I just hate Evans tights. <sighs> they, they all have multiple uh, colors. Yeah, Ooh. you know what they're going to be? Yellow. Yellow and light green. Yellow, light green, and possibly like yeah, they'll, a, they'll a have the travel punch red. variation. They'll have the the orange peach mango variation. Like I, <laughs> what are they Skittles? Their tights, their, their tights are the air boom tropics. Yeah, they're they're the they're the wrestling type version of a tropical drink. Yeah. Um. The, because Sheamus, they're uh, fruity, put them fish. The probably the best no, part of this match I'd say is when Sheamus uh, hit Otunga with the razor's edge. Yeah, because I, nobody likes it. Yeah. He, he's basically like Heath Slater. Times 10. 
Well, except for he, it, no, he they're, they're actually on equal footing in my opinion. Like I, I really don't can't like say why one is worse, but they're both pretty shit. I think in WWE 12, Slater has a higher overall. Why? Um, because Otunga has like the lowest of all all the male wrestlers. Even McGillicuddy has a higher overall. <laughs> Whether it be even, one, even the weirdest bone structure also, and then, but um, that's what he gets for shaving raw into his hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about that one mask Mysterio has that just says Raw on the back? <laughs> oh, I have, that one I have for SmackDown. He had one for ECW too. Oh, uh, yeah. but um, Triple H is talking to a referee. Like I don't think they really emphasize this, but the guy's basically kind of afraid for him, for his safety. Like he it was Lil Nate. Oh, oh, the, the fuck. Charles Robinson. Yeah, Robinson. Yeah, that's his name. If um. That basically, since the Miz and our truth were we're fucking with uh, Ref C, he doesn't he doesn't want to be in a ring in this kind of environment. But and at that, Triple H tells him he's like, "Tell the Miz and our truth, I want I want to see them." Yeah. Yeah. First thing, and then of course, right before commercial, they cut to Miz and Truth arriving, you know, together, because you know they shouldn't have been there at Showtime. <laughs> well, um, nothing no, no, after that. Don't. I just hate these things where they, they have guys showing they're entering now because we know that guys in the locker room, you know, they can just show up whenever they want. I mean, TNA is a victim of this all the time. Well, I guess they're a perpetrator, actually, more than a victim. But, um, but yeah, I haven't yeah, – this is probably the first time you've seen that in Raw in a long time. I can understand if you're doing it for, like, an official, like, say, Vince. Cause, yeah, you know, Vince, Vince did it all the time. Vince, I can understand it. Um – but a guy like a wrestler on the roster who has no other business than to, you know, entertain, I guess. <sighs> I don't get it. I just don't like it because it just, I think it, 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 uh, it promotes tardiness and that's just not right. Mm. But uh, Del Rio joins the backstage area and accuses Triple H of being the worst CEO ever. And he wants Vince McMahon back. And to this, Vince, um, Vince went ape shit and cut a promo on everyone after the, uh, after, after Raw went off air, because he was pissed that they, they, um, mentioned him, and he thought that it was, uh, it was a secret that Vince was gonna come back eventually. <laughs> yeah. if, if anyone spoiled it for the few people, for, like, the eight people that did not know what the end of this they, story was the eight be, people, I did. Enough, or young enough to, to really believe right. that Vince is no longer involved with the company. Right, people. They're the ones. Okay. They're the ones who believed X Pac's tweet was true. Which yeah. one? The one where he said that Vince is, that Vince stepping down was real. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, the thing is, the thing is with this, with them, with him mentioning his name. Firstly, WWE changes their stuff before TV all the time, so that doesn't mean anything. Two. Um, having this news come out about Vince being angry about the name mentioned only confirms it to the IWC that Vince is going to be the higher power again or whatever, or he's going to come back in a in a short fashion. Two, we know Vince is still technically chairman. He just has no power over the board or the company. So and that's, the, that's the one thing, though. That's the one thing when they say that Triple H is the, the highest dude in the company – they never mentioned that Vince technically never lost ownership of the company, and he's still – he's not the COO. He's still the chairman of the board, and he's still the CEO. Therefore, he still has pow more power than Triple H. Well, the thing is the board took away all his power. So he's, a, he's, basically, he's basically a figurehead. He's, he's George Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner pretty much worked until he died. And, and wasn't able to. Vince probably will do the same thing, actually. No, I can I can definitely see Vince McMahon at 88 walking down to the ring, lambasting a 40-something year old Dolph Ziggler. Something something will tell me that he's uh he's gonna be rolling down in a wheelchair, possibly a rascal. Then again, Vince's ego might be one of those that will be like, I never want to see people. I will never want to be seen as weak. Or yeah, or that he yeah he's gonna turn into like a Howard Howard Hughes or something. Oh God, um, that would be weird. But no, it won't. It will be par for course. I mean, well, yeah, I know. I'm just, I, I don't know. The guy who's been on TV for like his entire life. Okay, not his entire. Yeah, well, you know, a large part of it. He'll he'll and basically turn into uh, uh, 
ancient a uh, major zero from Metal Gear Solid four. Oh, but uh, all right. yeah, on, on that note, uh, Alberto Del Rio squashes John Morgan. Yeah, yeah. All your reason, reason, to know. reason being because Melina tried to interfere with Raw tonight. You know, as much as I want to believe that, um, I have not heard of. It's not. That, no, that wasn't the reason why he was squashed. Because like, the, it's still. I mean, what else are they going to do in terms of time? Like, well, the, oh, no. The only, thing is, no. The thing is, um, I, I was listening to Wrestling Observer Radio. Alvarez. Alvarez said that he heard about the Molina thing, but he talked to a guy um, backstage WWE. I think he said it was a, a writer or something. I don't know who. He, he didn't want to. Of course, they don't want to give away their sources. But he said. He said um, that the guy he talked to hadn't heard about this Molina thing, but he said there was a reason for it. Mm. So that's about it. Well, um, huge just like there, there, yeah, just like there was a reason why last year Tyson Kidd's mega mega push got squashed. Ah. Well, but, uh, well, regardless of it, regardless of the reasons behind it, it got Alberto Del Rio off as a monster heel. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if John Morrison's even over anymore. I mean, that's like that's like beating, to me, in my opinion, right now, that's like beating Drew McIntyre. That's a little harsh. <laughs> like Morrison, Morrison was over. Morrison has parkour charisma. Mor- Morrison has a, a shitload of longevity, and like he, if oh god, he's Shit. going through a rough patch right now. Yeah, because yeah, his, because his, I mean, at, okay, at least Drew McIntyre smarted up and um. And, and dropped his bitch. crazy bitch. Dropped the wife, the woman who abused him. But, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, Del Rio goes nuts on Morrison, arm breaks him, he taps, and he, and he kicks his ass after the ring. Uh, we move on to our huge What's action like 49 segment. 49 seconds? 49 seconds? It's something like so. that. I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, but, uh, the, the Hugh Jackman segment of the evening was actually fairly good. It was a lot better than I expected from any guest host. Um, yeah. He's probably the best guest host since Bob Barker. Yeah, like, I mean, especially considering, like, also the talent involved that they paired him with, like, he, he cuts his promo, he plugs his movie, talk, compares posting uh, Rada hosting the Oscars, yeah, blah, blah, blah. People, people um, did not care about his movie, though, which is funny. Thankfully, yeah. Dolphin Vicky interrupted him. I, I have a theory about that movie, but this isn't the platform to discuss it. Um, it's a rock and sock and robot movie. So. Well, that's not that's not the theory. It's just in terms of the making of it and what they were going for. But uh, Vicky uh, tr- basically cozies up to him and introduces herself, uh, says she's the hottest Eva and that Dolph's the, the hottest superstar. And, and, and then Jacqueline it's, calls it's out perfect. the cougar necklace. What's that say? What's that say? Cougar? <laughs> It's perfect for them to pair Dolph with with Jackman because Dolph's pretty much like like Hollywood sleaze. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, he, but he's perfection nonetheless. It's, it's, I mean, especially considering his sort of meta kayfabe uh, porn gimmick. <laughs> he's 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 Mr. Ass meets Val Venus meets a PG era, which is turns out to be pretty awesome. I mean, it is. He, oh, and the great in the great promo he cuts on um yeah. on Jackman. Good God. He's just like, um, who who are you? And doesn't what does he say he's too tall to be the Miz? Or he's too big to be the Miz? Something like oh, that. Oh no, no no, you know what he says? He he says like just just oh you're gonna you're all, always gonna be too busy just just shouting at a, a lighting guy because he walked into the Oh yeah, he thinks he's person. Christian Bale. Yeah. He's like, I, basically saying, I saw the prestige and I got you two uh, mixed up, but I don't give a damn. It's, it's it's the same kind of character, like endearing Eric. Yeah, yeah. But um, then he goes on to insult Cleveland, and honestly, like when when uh, Dolph Ziggler. Oh yeah, he he talks about his new movies, just like your new movie's about an underdog, and just like Cleveland, they're always an underdog. And you know what underdogs really are? They're losers. And then, then they do the whole setup for the the match that he's gonna have, where um, where he's just like, well, um, Jackman says he's gonna go into the locker room and find the biggest underdog he can and train him to uh, beat Ziggler tonight in a match. And then the crowd starts chanting, "We want Ryder," and then Jackman's like, "Oh, you want Ryder?" And then he goes out into the crowd and finds a sign that says, "Ryder's greater than Wolverine." Yeah, that that was good. Um, yeah, I, I Jackman really worked the crowd great. 
I didn't know what to expect from Jackman, but apparently he's been a lifelong WWE fan, which is great, and you could tell. To the, the point where, is, he, yeah, he posted that Twitter picture of, of yeah. him backstage with the Brooklyn Brawler. Brooklyn Brawler, he's just like, yeah. I saw him in, like, the 80s. And, like, so was, like, actually, the, the, what the report said was that he was he's a big fan of the mid-80s WWF stuff, but he hasn't watched it in a while. Well, he's been famous. <laughs> but I mean, also, like, here's, here's, the, here's another point. Um... Jackman, who's probably never been in a WWE ring or a wrestling ring, period, got in there, ran the ropes, like, no big deal. Can yeah. Hugh Jackman teach the Divas division to do this? Again, like, it, it's one I mean, of Lance that, Storm that, volunteered but, to teach Kelly Kelly specifically. But yeah, uh, jo- Johnny Laronitis tells uh, Miz and Truth that, that Triple H wants them to see him. Sorry, sorry for the abrupt... Uh, Subject change, but but like Jackman again, we'll we'll get to him later. We'll we'll finish our half of talking about him. Sin Cara versus Cody. Oh, excuse me. No Cody. Oh, no. He, for some reason, he's just be, like swatted away once uh once uh yeah. our, the match that never took place. They had to. He was preparing to blade or not to get busted open the next night, so he couldn't <laughs> wrestle tonight. Yeah, I'm sure he's really thrilled about that. God, gusher. It's a fountain. But, but, uh, uh, they, they, carrying on the carrying on the Rhodes family tradition. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till he gets his first scars. Um, Hunakara. J- yeah, is, is no, this thing. is the first. It was the real Sin Cara that came out. Uh, it was the Mystico. Uh, Mysticara, and then then Cody comes out. He doesn't make it halfway down the ramp until Hunakara comes out, and then. They do it, the whole pyro and entrance thing again. Then they do a, a stunt show. Like, they do a, a Joey Chipwood stunt show without the cars. Yeah, and one up and ship. And they botch a good amount of the moves. Mm-hmm. I guess I guess uh, Mystico is like a is like a cone of, uh, of botch. Right, it's funny because... He's the WWE, walking botchamania. Right. WWE doesn't like Mystico because he, he acts too arrogant... Um, which is funny because that's what they want out of him. And because which he is also funny. Star, because, no, and they wanted to be a star. It's also funny because they can't. They really can't understand who, what he's saying. Like right, and then they don't like Hunico because because of his poor matches, essentially. Poor matches. Which he he wrestles just fine. Yeah, I know. I guess I guess they don't think he does enough like high spots or something. I don't know. And there, there was that really bad match with Heath Slater. I think they still is in fresh memory that they had to retape three times. Mm, whatever. I, they, they, we've established that Sin Cara and Sin Cara are feuding. I would love to have a Hell in a Cell match between them two just to see what they'll do with it. Probably nothing. Yeah, I um, mean, that'd be cool. I mean, actually, I think John Morrison and Hell in a Cell would be cool if they could get him uh, to do the parkour crap. If he could if he could do, like, a wall run off of the cage or something. Yeah, maybe they need to put some uh, some some adhesive on his feet. Stick him. Something like that. But um, yeah. tri- the, the backstage segment between Triple H and Miz and R-Truth are just occurring in... I it's rare that you ever see like the, like such build up to a backstage segment because it's, <laughs> it's like ha- having two other promos is fairly unprecedented these days to lead up to another promo. Um, basically, our truth and Miz are apologetic, probably because they were told beforehand that they'd be slapped with a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine each. Well, didn't he? Um, didn't he find? He he said he accepted their apology and was going to find them two hundred fifty thousand dollars right there in this promo. Yeah, because this is the Triple H, and Triple H is the only one who can find them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when and when John and when Johnny Ace told them when they got there, uh, they were already acting incredibly remorseful. Yeah, that, that's that's basically where where I got the. I I think I think. As heels, that would be that would be the perfect thing for them to do is like, like do well, the schnitzky. Pretty, it wasn't my fault. That's a big fine on. But um, the, he Triple H books a match, uh, Awesome Truth versus CM Punk and John Cena for losing a tag title match. They they've kind of escalated. They didn't even have a main event set until this moment. I mean, actually, don't you think it's kind of hypocritical of Triple H? to so harshly 
punish Truth and Miz for attacking referees when tr- when one of Triple H's old gimmicks back in 2000 was to attack the referee. He's moved on. Yeah. Still, I don't I don't think Earl Hebner would be very happy with it. Mm. Uh Wow, Mark Henry segment. Oh my! I, I, I can't. I, I don't know. I'm kind of warming up to his his title reign. He, it's still Mark Henry, though. He, it, just because you're right, he, you're right. just because he's the world champion and they built a pretty decent story around him and they actually put some effort into him doesn't necessarily make him a better wrestler. Doesn't make him not he, Mark Henry. It doesn't make him not suck anymore. But um, yeah, he's Jim Ross interviews him, t- t- asking him about the naysayers, Henry. Talks about all the naysayers, including Ross, and no one believed he was going to do it. But like he, he gets proper pissed off, starts pulling on Jr.'s tie, <laughs> to which you're Jim Ross hurting me. Sits sits there going, you're hurting me, you're hurting me, Mark. <laughs> and he isn't even like he isn't even holding him by the throat. He's holding him by the by the scruff of the neck. We'll see not, but see the he's, thing he's about it. He's tie choking again. He's tie choking again. It's okay now that we fired um, Daniel Bryan over it. Yeah, they can't fire their world champion. It's 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 the curtain call. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Jim Ross basically sounded like he was hyping something going on in a match. Only it was happening to him. Well, it's he's, like, he's when, it's like when he got. It's like when Jack Swagger put him in the ankle lock and he started calling commentary on oh, his yeah. own move. <laughs> oh my god! It, it hurts real bad! Going, god almighty! Uh, that's. And then, Jer- and then Jerry, Jerry Lawler comes into the ring and this is where the shit sort of hit the fan. Well, yeah. Uh, because, but unbeknownst to us uh, as it was happening, but. But apparent what the deal with this is that Mark Henry lets JR go and then Jerry Lawler gets Ross out of the ring. Then Je- then Henry picks up Jerry by his shirt and he says, You'll take his you're taking his place. Do you get me? Do you understand me? Jerry Lawler punches him a couple of times. Mark Henry smacks the shit out of him, world's strongest slam, throw to the outside, disassembles the announce table. And then he puts him through the announce table, and the table did not break that well. Because it was not a gimmicked table. Because there was lots of backstage bullshit that the apparently the ring crew were told not to gimmick the table, but Henry and Lawler were told that they were doing the table spot. So Lawler's... The, the table sort of broke and sort of didn't. And yep. Lawler smashed right into the ground, and he apparently had to actually go to the hospital. Still, uh, still, uh, oh, excuse me, that that was the second thing that, that Vince blew up over. Yeah, that was what, apparently what made Vince go into his, you know, red face promo mode, is mm-hmm. the, the screwing up of the table spot. Once again, I, we'd all like right, to he blamed specifically, kind of... uh, he specifically blamed Dean Malenko and... Can't remember Arne who the other one. Arn Anderson. Arne Anderson. Yep, it was Arne. it was double A. Yeah. Why would Which he just, is I it's unfortunate. The agents for that, like because um, the agents, because the agents are, the are because responsible for setting up the match. It's like yeah, how yes, it's but. like how when Finley got fired because he's the one that put together that house show, show segment with Miz interrupting the national anthem while national guardsmen were in front row. Yeah, bad news bears. And that was a house show. Um, and now Finley is putting on like four star matches in Independence. Kelly Kelly and Eve Torres versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia. So you mentioned you mentioned it before. Eve Torres rolls up uh, fucking Natalia. Why? Why? Because they're apparently trying to put over that they're lucky. After the match, they bolt. Even Shut though up. the crowd is one hundred percent against Kelly and Eve for the whole match. It's it's astounding, really, because you would think that the logical conclusion of this Divas of Doom thing would be for Beth to beat Kelly. Steamroll. But, but all three times, Kelly has Kelly and or Eve has gotten a sneak roll up after getting the shit kicked out of them, and they bolt immediately after. That's something the heel does, not the face. 
You're doing it wrong, WWE. But yes, um, Hugh Jackman's talking to Zack Ryder. Comedy segment as as you. It was think. still a great segment. Yeah. yeah, basically Jackman, he's he's like, you're not an underdog. You're delusional and out of your mind. Yeah, you're because, awesome. Um, he yeah. says he says this like. So let me get this straight. You you invented an internet championship that you gave yourself. The w, the divas want nothing to do with you, and. And I can't remember. Um, you have an internet remember. show. Yeah, you have like an internet show, and you invent internet. Yeah, and then he's just like, "You're not." Yeah, and then he says, "You're not. Um, whatever. You're you're delu- You're not an underdog. You're delusional." And then he's like, "You're perfect." <laughs> and then um, then they fist pump, and then they um, pretty much get set to go out to the ring. And the match is uh, again in keeping with the trend of uh, short matches, about like five minutes of. Of Ziggler mostly doing five minutes of awesome. Yeah, the crowd was hot for it. The crowd. This is probably the most active the crowd was, other than when what happened at the end of the show happened. Well, the main event also. The main event, like they were, they were hot for that. That was, uh, yeah, that was very good. But um, mostly Ziggler getting the advantage. Ryder does his broski boot. Um, in the midst of it, Vicky slaps uh, Zach Ryder. Yeah, Yeah, Ryder gets in the six one nine position. Yeah, and then she gets slapped, and then and then uh, referee starts arguing with uh, with Vicky because he wants to throw her out, but she's like, "You can't throw me out!" And then uh, and then they keep going at that, and then uh, Jackman gets up on the ring apron, looks both ways, classic heel manager maneuver, and then he just clocks Ziggler in the mouth for one, which apparently he said on Twitter he got a hairline fracture in his jaw, which was not true because there was no MRI or X-ray taken. It's 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 Ziggler being heel. Exactly, and the Aspect. and then um and then um yeah exactly, and then Ryder hits the um Rough Rider to which Cole goes not the Rough Rider. <laughs> <laughs> this was certainly a real steal for Zack Ryder, he says. Oh God, yes, that was terrible too. Uh, yes, Michael it, Cole it and his terrible, horrible though, puns. In my opinion. And then and then unfortunately the most adverse effect of this match was that we no longer will be seeing an ask ask the heel and. Z true Long Island story. You mean ask the heel? Yeah, ask ask the heel. That's what I said. You said Vicky. I did. I thought I said ask the heel. You did whatever. Not. Whatever. That's what I meant. I said yeah. ask the Vicky. A promo video for. Oh yeah, there's a promo video for <laughs> for fucking Jack Swagger for God only knows what reason. So we because... can go cut the backstage um, and be like, see Vicky, that right there was Swagger. You know something I noticed this about Swagger. Like Bernie Mac. <laughs> something like I noticed Mac. about something I noticed about Swagger in, in the suit. When when Swagger's in a suit, his head looks like a bobblehead. <laughs> like his head is so much bigger than the rest of his body no, when he's wearing a suit. I one of my favorite images that came out of his uh, World Heavyweight Championship run was that the first week he had it, uh, he he was in a suit, so he basically looked just like a bigger version of Jericho. Yeah, wasn't um, it? Wasn't it like had, Chris like, Jericho's a, face plus mushroom equals Swagger yeah, plus, plus mega mushroom? <laughs> that that was an awesome image. But um, CM Punk and John Cena, yes, uh, they're talking about making history with matches and Del Rio oh, yeah. in a cell and uh, and in, and how Cena reminds us that someone's getting fired and it would suck if it was Punk. Yeah, this um this was also a terrible backstage segment because this is where Cena is trying to get over them as a tag team or something. He's just like, "We're going to be the new Rock and Roll Express." While he's acting more Rock and Roll Express than the Rock and Roll Express. Yes. And well, and when and something something I noticed when he said Rock and Roll Express, probably eight people in the crowd remember who the Rock and Roll Express are. Right. But um he, I mean, he just really meant it for the night. Like, oh, it's it's so it's so great. It's well, pretty much every tag team is the Rock and Roll Express. These we'll have your face well, tag team. Yeah. So they they work the same ring psychology match. But every um, every tag team match since the Rock and Roll Express has had been has had the same psychology. Eh. eh more there, or less. There are some I mean, ROH obviously doesn't. It, it's doesn't it's more consistently true than not. But every yeah, every player. main every WWE and TNA tag match. 
but uh, nonetheless, uh, CM Punk and John Cena officially consider each other worthy opponents, um, which is kind of, kind of cool, I have to say. Like I, I'm I'm good with I'm very 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 uh, good with that. Um, we uh, the next segment is their match, Miz and Truth versus CM Punk and John Cena, and this probably the only I mean Ryder and 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 Ziggler was it was a good match because of the people involved, but again it was short. This one and the crowd was hot for it. This one was a was a decent one, like, and the crowd was pretty much hot for everyone. But yeah, why why isn't an Evan Bourne and Kofi Kingston facing CM Punk and John Cena? Because it's two faces, face teams. And, and plus, they needed to build up what was going to happen immediately after the match. Right. And when Miz and Truth uh, entered for this match, despite the fact that they were so like remorseful quiet Sorry. quiet and remorseful they still had the charisma and the drive to do their you suck rapping to the crowd thing it's the greatest theme song in WWE well they're currently. not attacking a referee when they're doing that are they right and you know the thing is a lot of people have brought up that um that uh, Mark Henry attacked Jerry or not Jerry well he attacked Jerry Lawler and he attacked JR and they're, they're announcers. Why aren't they any different than referees? Well, technically, announcers are on the superstars list. Um, so, in my opinion, that means they can be they can go get in the ring and do things like that. It's a little different. Referees are listed on a completely separate roster on their website, so they're held to a different set of whatever. Also, Mike Kyoto's 30-day suspension is just up now. Um... <laughs> So, I mean, I think there is a small difference, albeit a technical difference and kind of a nitpicky one, but it is a difference nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of the match itself, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's you, you get to see Cena and Punk do double team spots, such as the, the uh, double hip toss they did in, towards the beginning. Yeah, I, I love I love that they're bringing back uh, double uh, tag team double team moves. Yeah, I'm, yeah, they're they're very weak in this right now, but they're okay. Yeah, they, they they need to have a start at least. They're right now they're they're pretty much just on um they're on backbreaker, elbow drop or fist drop or whatever. Yes. I personally want to see someone do. Um, I completely forget who did it. Uh, the only ones I remember doing it on certain occasions was head cheese back in two thousand. It, it's the the backbreaker into the top rope leg drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I saw that at Chikara show a while I back. Mean, you, you, like in Punk, in Punk and Cena's case, you could have a gut buster to a to a diving leg drop, but that right. But that like I, I don't know if they, they're not a permanent team. But nonetheless, uh, quite notably, CM Punk was the one with the hot tag. Yeah, like and the crowd went nuts for for the people who who are usually much 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 more over. And and I must stress for the multiple, I don't even remember how many week in a row, pretty much since they started this, uh, the CM Punk, John Cena stuff, Cena had got, once again, a completely split down the line reaction from the crowd. It, it wasn't, the crowd wasn't dead like they were for the go-home show for Night of Champions, but... Um, they were, they were, at times booing Cena more than they were cheering him. Eh, um, I don't know. Like I haven't really noticed too too dramatic a difference. Like, believe me, I when when I go to I I will definitely note when I go to Survivor Series, I'll note the reaction that that uh, Cena gets and try to shield my ears from the fucking enormous reaction that The Rock is is going to get. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to be there too, so exp expect me to be one of the people booing Cena. Okay. Yeah, I have to uh, imagine that MSG is just yeah. going to blow up and hate him. It's a super... Well, New York City is a super smarky area for well, us. Yeah. Yes, but, yes, but. Like, but, but he, he's, he's still over, like, pretty much anywhere he goes. It's not like the crowd is full of just smarks. But, uh, so if, nonetheless, uh, the... The match finish occurs when, when Punk is about to hit uh, Miz with a with a GTS. He 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 elbows him out of it. He, he's about to 
Oh, yeah. Punk whips Miz into truth, but Miz stops himself. Uh, Punk ducks and I, I think drop kicks or, or pushes Miz into our truth anyway. GTS is and, and wins. And they, they have a big ass celebration with, with Punk pretty much taking it like a, like a full on baby face. Yeah. And, and Cena raising Punk's hand. And dude, doing it way too, fu- with way too much strength. <laughs> about to he he basically just located his shoulder. <laughs> and then after the match, out comes Mr. COO Hunter Hearst Helmsley in these exact words Punk, good match. Ms. Truth, you're fired. Dun, dun, dun. Triple H making examples. Yes, and then Ms. and Truth look legitimately bewildered and Michael Cole completely loses his shit. Yeah, of course. And it's Michael Cole. Obviously. Like, you, you find them a quarter million dollars accepted their apology. How can they do this? How can he do this? How can Triple H do this? Because he has the power to Michael Cole. Maybe JR's barbecue sauce messed up your body. That would be pretty funny if next week Michael Cole does like a, a sort of quasi I'm, I'm striking kind of thing. Well, he would have done that on SmackDown, wouldn't he? Like the oh yeah, fuck, you're you're right about that. I no, mean, he was too granted, he was too busy arguing with Booker T about whether or not to put on Cody Rhodes' bag. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean we we haven't finished, but yeah, um, we will get to that. And then is the truth go backstage, and then conveniently all of the locker room is lined up watching the monitors. And then I like point that back. Triple H comes back, and Scott Stanford tries to interview him, and then Miz and Truth start beating the shit out of Triple H, and conveniently, everyone that is there, face and heel, pulls the two of them off to Triple H, and then they le- legitimately throw them out of the building. It's because Triple and, H has never been able to defend himself. Yes, and all the while, Zack Ryder is recording this for Long Island Ice C. It's true, true Long Z true Long Island story. But, True Z True Long Island story. You basically I, just said his. He just said one of his nicknames. Uh, it's okay. Whatever. It's okay. I, I'm. I don't know you're, why you're I'm, not quite. The, you're not quite the broski I am. I get it. I'm. I'm subscribed to him on YouTube and I watch his stuff, so I don't know how I messed that up. Anyway, then Triple H. Do you like him on Facebook or follow him on Twitter? Yes, I have yet to buy the broski shirt, the broski shades, and the broski shit, and the broski headband, and I do not die, uh, spike my hair. Anyway. He doesn't sell the broski shit. That goes down the toilet. Yeah, whatever. Into Regard- New Jersey. Regardless, um, Triple H, after throwing the two of them out, he parts the waters of the WWE locker room, and in a little touch that I actually really liked, the very last person that he walks by is Johnny Ace, and then he does the weakest cart flip in the history of Oh, Christ. yeah, no, that, that, that was he not a He tries to do it, but it's not. He tries to. He barely gets one wheel a centimeter off of the ground. Yeah, I th- it's because the thing was caught under a, a, a stage cart or something like that, so it wasn't going to flip anyway. <laughs> so he just he picked the wrong thing to try and flip. And that ends the show, and as a whole... I like it. The, the matches were a bit too short and a bit too squashy. But other than that, the main event was very good, and the crowd was very into it. I love that CM Punk got the got the rub with the hot tag. And, yep. and it, it, this is another one of those Raws that they've been doing ever since July, where it's consistently been something at the end of the show that makes you want to watch it the next week. I agree. Yeah. The old, the only raw is, since July that has not made me feel like that uh, was most of the Night of Champions Go Home show, just because of how fucking dull it was. I don't know, but yeah, like it really just failed to impress me. Like a the it's like the only thing they put any effort into. When actually, I, and firstly though, I think that part of the problem with that was that the crowd is that. Ottawa isn't necessarily the best place for crowd reactions, and they weren't into about 90% of the show. Wait, they gave Night of Cena, Champions? No, not Night of Champions, uh, oh. the go-home show for Night of Champions. The oh, go-home show. And, yeah, it's like the only segment that they put any real effort into was the punk Triple H promo at the end. 
and that, but th- this week was much improved over last week. 